So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, as uh, Renee said, my name is Brent Hillebrenner, and today uh, uh, Eddie, Daniel, and myself are going to be talking about the 3D design implementation. Uh, first, let me make sure this is working. All right, so I'm going to be as brief as possible, because I think what you really came here to see is what Eddie and Daniel have to show. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the, the rollout process. Plus, I want to make a, a few key points to help drive adoption, because some of the districts are wavering a little bit on picking up this 3D design. So I do want to make some points to, to help those districts who are wavering to urge them to take the plunge and let's start moving into it. Um, and then uh, Eddie's going to talk about the, the 3D model, you know, how to create it, and also kind of show you some of the workflows. And then uh, Daniel's going to uh, you know, sh showcase some of the, the projects that are going on around the state. We have uh, at least 14 districts who are really making good headway in using this new software to create projects. So I think you'll be excited to see some of that. As well as Daniel's going to talk about some of the resources that are available for those districts who, who need the help. Uh, with the 14 districts that we're helping now, we've, we've, we have resources and we have helped them have workshops to help get their projects over the hump. So. And then we'll have, uh, hopefully have time for Q&A at the end. Uh -oh. uh, have we switched it to this yeah, one? Yeah, okay. right. Sorry guys, technical difficulty. <laughs> All right. So the... You're starting off with an old slide deck there on the wrong computer. Okay, so uh, there we go. So some key points I want to make because I think it's important to help uh, you know drive the design or, or drive the the uh, you know the adoption of, of this 3D design is. Uh, so let's talk about what is 3D de uh, design. So I think it's really important to to uh, to make the point that really our design processes aren't changing too terribly you know, too terribly. I mean, we still have a horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, super elevations, and cross sections. The only difference is now that, uh, you know, we have a, a 3D model as a product. And, you know, the designers are still working in 2D, and all they do is push a template down a corridor, and it creates a model. And the software itself actually manages the 3D model. So for those of you who are still kind of intimidated by it, our workflows really aren't changing, so we encourage you to, you know, take the plunge and go. Um, and really, we're doing true modeling now, you know, no longer with these ancillary files, input files, and all that kind of thing. When you build a, a model, you, uh, you know, a 3D model, you, you put together all the parameters, horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, and these are all in DGN files and not ancillary files, and you reference them together, and it builds your model. Um, and so when you, when you make changes to these models, you know, you might have to uh, update the profile a little bit, maybe change your uh, alignment a little bit. Those, those changes automatically trickle down through the, through the, you know, the templates and then down into the, the 3D model itself. So it's all, I can't say it's, you just push a button and it's done, unfortunately, but uh, it's managed for you, the 3D design. Um, and I guess another key point, although uh, Eddie uh, showed us uh, some of the visualizations that he's doing, and uh, visualization is very important, but it's not absolutely necessary. So if, if you're, you know, kind of, that's one of the reasons you, you're maybe timid in taking on a project in 3D design, it's not absolutely necessary. So, and that gets to the next point, what are the, you know, what are 3D plans? And uh, you know, I think the key takeaway here is our plans for, for now are going to be exactly the same as they have been. This software does not change that at all. Um, with these new design tools, these open road tools, you will still be able to, you know, put out the same plan and profile sheets, uh, you know, just all your same plan sheets, cross sections and everything. So these tools are just much better, but you can still put out the same uh, set of plans. But we do have the option now, we have a very, you know, if you choose that route, you'll have a very good model uh, that you can give to the contractor, either, you know, pre-bid to help them make a more informed, uh, you know, decision on their bid, 
as well as you know, post-bid, they can take that model, plug it into their machine guidance, and there'll be some savings there. Um, and of course, you know, in the future, uh, we are going to, I'm sure, we'll go to more of a, a business integrated model where, you know, uh, I guess they call it a BIM model, where everything for the life cycle of the project to maintain the roadway asset will be kind of in a, in a virtual model. And so we'll, we'll probably move away from our traditional plan sets, but that's, that's well into the future, so. Um, why is 3D design better? So um, the biggest one is design time visualization. You know, designers, uh, you know, when they create their alignments, profiles, superlation, templates, uh, again, the, the 3D is managed by the software itself, which is done, you know, virtually as you're, you're putting everything together. And so the designer can, can go look at that model and see if there's errors in, his, in their ditch, uh, you know, errors at ramp doors, errors in retaining walls. So decisions can be made on the fly, you know, as far as, oh, I need to adjust this or that. These are things that we probably traditionally miss in our designs and maybe cause errors and omissions in plans or, or change orders. So, um, so, and with these new tools, you know, we can do uh, scenarios a lot faster. I think uh, Daniel, one of the projects he's going to show, they did, uh, you know, for his Lubbock project, they did several scenarios that, that they could then show to the stakeholders and make an informed decision and, uh, you know, and come up with a good design right off the bat. And so I think that's going to lead to, you know, better bids and just better, a better product from, you know, from the beginning. Uh, so just, uh, just real quick before I hand it over to these guys. Uh, this, the, oops, all right, so I guess I don't have a laser, but anyway, the ones in green, uh, this slide's kind of showing all the, all the districts who have taken on projects in 3D design. All of the districts, all 25 of them have identified projects, um, but the ones in green are the ones that uh, we've been working with and have sent us models, uh, you know, that, that Daniel's going to show you here in a bit. So if we missed someone and you actually have one done, please please let us know. But basically 14 districts, uh, I won't read them all out in the interest of time, but, uh, but they're all, th they're producing good plans and, and, and good 3D design. And, uh, and I guess real quick, just pointed out there, these are just district plans. And uh, you know, Eddie talked about uh, some of those roundabouts, were those done by consultants or those 3D designs? Okay, so we, we do want you uh, to start getting your consultants to do this work as well. And we've heard from quite a few of them, but we do, uh, we want them to be starting to using these new tools as well. So just real quick, uh, status update on the, the 3D design project. Uh, we started training in December in the Austin and San Antonio districts. Uh, we've had five waves basically. Uh, we're in the fifth wave now, which is uh, Houston, Bryan, Beaumont, and Lufkin, and training will end, is going to end in December. So we will be finished with the, the 3D design portion of the project in December. Um, and then we, you know, at some point we will expect all new projects to start using these tools. Um, and since I'm up here and project-wise is another project we're working on, I just wanted to give you a quick update to the status of that. Uh, Right now, we started that in January. Uh, we've done several waves. Right now, we're in just wave three. Kind of, we use the same wave system, you know. So we're in the old North districts, and uh, so they're going to be getting trained until March of 2016. And then uh, the, you know, the wave five, we're not going to wrap that up until July of 2016. So we still have a ways to go on that. But eventually, all of these things are going to work together you know, building our model, maintaining our asset, and, and all that. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Eddie.